Hi everyone, my name is James Akers. I'm an architect and a full-time professional renderer and a professor of iPad drawing at UCLA. And Anna asked me to teach this one lesson in her course about how I draw a floor plan, floor plan from scratch. And I couldn't be more honored because uh, the first time I saw Anna's work, I was so impressed. I knew we were on the same wavelength. Her renderings are very architectural, whereas a lot of interior design renderings are not. And I just couldn't have been more honored than to be invited to teach this. So here we go. This is my special take on how I draw a floor plan from scratch, and I hope you enjoy it. So there are basically two ways that I like to draw to scale. One is what I call proactively drawing to scale, and the other is retroactively drawing to scale. And in proactively, what you're doing is you're starting with a, maybe it's a sheet of graph paper, or maybe it's an existing floor plan and uh, that you've got because you're putting an addition to it or something. And you also will be starting with a, a scale. And so before you even make your first mark, you'll have these resources. And then let's say we're doing a uh, 40 foot by 24 foot room you'll know exactly how big that is and you'll draw that in and that's your 40 feet and that's your 24 feet. Now the other way we can draw is what I call retroactively and in this you just start with a blank piece of paper and you've got all your touchy-feely emotions intact and you're just let me see if I can do that I'll try that I'll, I'll sketch again and you're just going to basically estimate uh, the size of things. You, you still may want to draw a 40 by 20 thing, but you're going to get there by estimating the size of it. You're going to use the proportions of a square, say, for example, and you'll know that that's the 24. And here, so if I subdivide that square, that means each of these is 12. And then if I add one more of those, now I'm at 36. So you'll be using proportions to design without any reference to scale but you'll then take that and retroactively scale it up up to the size that you want of the on the proper size of gridded paper and then once that's done you can it becomes more like this and you can then bring in your gridded paper underlay and then you can add your scale ruler and continue to work that way, okay? So that's retroactively where you start freehand and you start in a very loose way. And again, proactively, you start with that grid. So let's go there next and see how to do both of those styles. So to proactively design to scale, I, I like to start with a grid template. So I'll go up here within the gallery section of my iPad. I'll go to import, and then I'll go to my iCloud drive, the home page of my iCloud drive, and I will go to the grid and template section of my iCloud drive. Now you can see here I have both imperial grids and 17 by 11 and 24 by 18, and I also have metric grids. Let me find those for you right here in both metric A2 and A3 sizes. So decision point number one is, do I launch a metric? Am I working in metric or am I working in imperial? And if you are working in imperial, say, I'll go back to the 11, 17 by 11, then once you launch your grid, you can also add in a imperial scale ruler. So down here you can see I've got the scale rulers, full size, imperial, metric, and engineer, and half size, which are a little easier to move around. So I'll, I'll for instance, tap on the half size, and I'll bring up the architect's one eighth and one quarter scale, okay? And all of this is linked together. So both the grid and the scale are at 300 dpi, and they are, they are the actual size. If you print this out on a standard copy machine in, in an imperial-based country, 
This will come out to the actual size of a physical scale. And you can see here how these are designed to work together because the um, in eighth inch equals a foot, each of these grids is eight feet long, subdivided eight times. And here is the corresponding eight foot. And that will also be true. I'll tap the 45 rotate. And if you want to work in quarter scale, it will also line up with the grid. So that's the importance of everything being at 300 DPI. Now the same is true. I'll go back to the gallery. And for the metric designers among us, I'll go again to import. I'll go back to the home page of my iCloud drive. I will go to the metric. That's, that's launch an A3 grid template which is the closest thing to an 11 by 17. And we'll launch this one with the five millimeter divisions and the 10 millimeter emphasis with a title. And there comes that. And again, you can see the title block at the bottom in case you're into that, or you can get them without titles. And to this, I will now add a, I'll go back to the iCloud homepage and I'll go to the scales again and I will add a half metric scale this time. So if we wanted to work closer to um, in, in the States, we would, we would call it quarter inch equals a foot is a pretty large scale. That's roughly equivalent to your one to 50, but let's stay in eight scale. And so we'll launch this one to a hundred. And again, you can see that this is then closely linked to both the scale ruler and the grid are linked together. That's because they're both created at 300 DPI and that will keep them permanently linked together. And notice this, I'll make a point about all the scales. Notice this note, caution, avoid accidentally transforming scale. And that's simply because you want to keep these scales at their actual size so that they continue to work with the grid. And if you accidentally, you can be, uh, you can accidentally enlarge these at times. So if you do and you catch yourself in time and you're trying to move it around, say, and suddenly you grab it and it, ooh, it enlarges, just tap with your fingers, tap with two fingers one time and it'll go back. And if you think you've created multiple errors and enlarged it several times, just keep tapping until it goes all the way back and you can even go all the way back to where it disappears and then use three fingers to bring it back okay so let's go back and now if you are we use the example of a a 40 foot by 20 foot design so despite the fact that i'm working to scale i still like to work to in in a very freehand method so i'm going to add a layer to this so that both my scale and my grid template are safe. And I'll pick a color. I like to work in red a lot of times. And I'll come up here and I like to work with this technical pen. And this is part of a, a brush set that I've put together, but it has all of the things that I use as an architect for concept design and rendering. And I've borrowed these brushes from other places in this vast library of brushes. So I like to design with a technical pen and I'll just start to um, lay out that 40 by 24 space. So each of these, each of these grids is eight feet. So I'll go eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. Now you notice that it says 20 here. That's because I've got the scale flipped. So I'll go and highlight that layer. I'll tap the move and transform tool and I'll just rotate this 45 degrees, four different times. And now you can see that I'm drawing to that scale. So always remember to go back to your design layer before you start again. So I know I'm coming to this point to create my eighth scale first design sketch. Okay, so I'll throw in the rest of that room like this. And then I know that that room is going to be 24 this way. 
and just by coincidence, I'm at three squares that way. Three times eight equals 24. So I can begin to design. And in this particular example, I'm going to I'm going to create kind of a um, living room over here and a dining room over here, and there'll be a fireplace in there. So, so that's the boundary of the room I'll be designing inside. And of course, there are another, a number of options that Procreate gives you here. I can go back to this grid that we imported to begin with, and I can turn the opacity of that grid way down because I don't really like to design over a grid. I, I find that it makes my design somewhat stiff. So I'll turn the opacity down and you can still see it. It's a lot lighter. I could even go lighter, but I want this to remain visible to all of you in this lesson. So I'll take it about there and I'll tap back out of the layer menu. And the other option is that at any time I can change this red pen that I'm using. I can go into the adjustments menu, as you all know, and I can tap on hue saturation. I could change the color if I wanted to get crazy that way, but I can also just completely go down in the saturation and make it black. So let's keep it black for now. Um, I'm trying to uh, also get across the fact that I like to work in a very loose way and I find that frees up my the design part of my mind. So now I'll add a layer because we'll start to play around with some furniture and again we're in the proactively scaled design mode here and so I'll change this to black and again I'm in the technical pen and sometimes I, as in as another option, I'll turn down the opacity so my black pen becomes a little bit more like a pencil. And I'll just start scribbling. So I'm going to try and make this a, a dining room. So I know that there might be a piece of furniture. Maybe it's 18 inches against this wall. And then maybe I need at least three feet before I get to a dining room table. Probably more. So let's go four feet before we get to the table. Let's make it a three foot wide table. And you can see I'm just picking up right on this grid itself. This is going to be a pretty big room, Game of Thrones style. I think I can get four chairs on either side for Thanksgiving dinner. And I'll put in a little uh, arrangement bowl in the middle of the table. Then I'll come this way. And maybe this time I'll give five feet because what I'd like to do is put a fireplace in here. And that fireplace is going to have a bit of a hearth. So let me draw the line of the hearth first at, say, five feet. So there's ample room to scoot around this table. And I'll throw in that, let's say that that hearth projects one foot. And the firebox itself is three feet. And we'll make it a large baronial fireplace that is open on two sides, say. Okay, and notice I, I, I know I'm going to be drafting this up later or improving it later, so I'll just stay very loose like this. I know my firebox will have this slight angle, so it projects the flames out. And I can even draw in some logs there, okay? And then when I'll get over here, and I know I want some kind of a coffee table here. I don't want it to burn up. And I think I might want to put a, um, let's start this way. Let's, let's start by putting in a couple of chairs for our guests at an angle. And I'm just... I'm just eyeballing this, but I'm going to, I'm going to use something about three feet by three feet for these chairs. All right. And then I know back here will be another, uh, large sofa and that might be three feet and maybe it's eight feet wide. And I'll just, you know, put a few tick marks. So I know what I'm, know what I'm dealing with and drawing. And then a coffee table could go in there and I've got a lot of space back here. I think um, I'll put the entrance to this in the middle so it lines up with that fireplace. And we'll worry about how we get to the dining room later. But that's, uh, I'm not an interior designer, but I do like it when there's a parson table behind the sofa. And I'll put a couple of lamps there. 
so I can visualize that. And then I do play piano, and I love that. So let me put in a 12-inch deep shelf for art and for books back here. And I'll give myself maybe two feet of space. And then I'll put in a piano bench, and then I'll put in the biggest grand piano I think my clients can afford. So let's make that a, a seven-footer. I think that's a Steinway D, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll go five, two more, somewhere in there. I guess we could even go nine feet if we had to. And there's my piano. And again, I'm being very loose. I think it would be nice to have some kind of huge windows opening up. Maybe this is a gorgeous view of the mountains or something like that. Uh, I should probably make that a little more regular because, I, again, I don't know what the outside of this architecture is going to look like yet, but I also know that uh, I don't want to get these windows and doors to be too big. And, of course, at any time, I can go back to that other layer and just quickly erase out. I like to use the flat marker as my eraser so I can just quickly erase out some of these lines and begin to get a sense of the totality of the project coming together okay so i'll go back to my design layer i'll tap again on my pen that i was using and it's nice that procreate keeps that setting in the pen it keeps that opacity low as i switch brushes so that brush will always have that opacity until i change it at some point and here are my sliding doors big fantastic sliding doors that slide past each other. There's my wall. So let's see, what am I missing now? It would be nice to have a carpet here. And here again, here's one of the strengths of Procreate. I can go in and select this furniture group. I think I've crowded it a little too much towards this fireplace. So I'll, I won't use that, but I'll use my freehand selection mode and I'll grab these items here and I will tap the move tool and loosen that space up a bit, okay? And now what I'm going for here is I wanna put a beautiful carpet under this area, but I don't want it to be too weird and that it conflicts with the piano. Again, I'm using the disclaimer that I am not an interior designer. And then maybe there's an opportunity for uh, um, storing our wood over here uh, for the fireplace. And maybe there's a fantastic uh, cabinet here that's built in. I wanted to have an open feeling, so maybe I'll just settle for another great piece of furniture here with some art over it. And I'll move that wall over so I can make a kind of symmetrical presentation for that. And this is certainly big enough, and maybe we need to store our extra dining room chairs on either side. And I'll do a little artistic grouping here, a side table. Maybe I'll come in from my kitchen or pantry somewhere over there. So I'm just, you can see, keeping things very loose. I, I don't really know what's going to peter out here. But I want to I want to create what you might call these placeholder shapes for that design, okay? And at any time I can go back in and activate the scale layer and tap the move, and then I can come over and just check and and see am, am I way off or am I pretty close? So here I've got about a three foot deep sofa, so that's still working. And I'll do this. Notice this two finger clip two finger pinch to uh, get back to the original size. And now I'll move my scale back out of the way. And um, again, the great thing about uh, Procreate is I can group these two layers together. I'll just highlight that first layer and then I'll swipe right to left. No, I beg your pardon. I'll swipe left to right on that second layer, and they will now move together. So if I select this, both of those layers will move together, and that's nice because I might want to create options for this design. 
So I can, I can group these two and I can close up that group. And you see here, if I turn it on and off, that group will turn off. And I'll move the scale out of the way for the minute. And I can actually go back in and duplicate this group if I want to. And when I tap the Move tool, you'll see that a whole other group moves over and out of the way. And now I can open that group and I can do a different furniture layout in there if I wanted to. So a wonderful superpower of Procreate is this ability to duplicate things and move them around on your sheet. So that's what I would call proactively designing to scale with the grid present and even with a scale present to double check things. But I want to first show you the um, other way of drawing to scale, which is the retroactively drawing to scale. So I'll tap back out of this and go back to the gallery. Now to retroactively, to retroactively design to scale, I'll tap the uh, plus sign up here to launch a piece of paper. And I have, or what Procreate calls canvases. Now I have pre-made all of these uh, common paper sizes. So here for the Imperial world are eight and a half by 11 at 300 DPI, 11 by 17 and 24 by 18. And in the metric world, I've got A3 by A2. And you can even see I've created a YouTube 16 to 9 proportion at 300 DPI. And the key here is the 300 DPI for the obvious reason that we may want to add a scale and or a grid template later. But let's start in the freest possible mode. And in this situation, I will, again, test my my pen and this is more akin to just opening up a sketchbook on your lap while you're watching a movie or a game and sitting in your living room sofa or maybe you're sitting on a beach and you just start sketching and and maybe you're maybe you're working remote that week and you're going to um, start getting some work because you love this part of design so here is i'm going to eyeball a 24 by 24 square. Or what I'm really doing is eyeballing a square that has absolutely no dimensions. And I can get to this point and I can press the move and transform tool and I can rotate it uh, because very often we all have a kind of a bias when we draw like freehand. And you can see this, this is a little more warped than I thought it would be. So I'll go back and I'll I'll fix these. I'll just make this a little bit more uh, pleasing as a proportion of a square. And this is an acquired skill. I mean, I've been doing this for many, many years, but um, some of you are probably also very good at this. So I'll go back now to this point and I'll move that square up about here and I could make it bigger. Uh, again, I'm in uniform transformation mode. I can make it bigger if I want it to work bigger. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of what's comfortable for you and your design process. And now the next thing I'll do is I know I'm going to assign the 24 foot dimension to that at some point, but now I'm just going to use the eyeballs to um, subdivide this square. Okay. So when I do that, it's easiest, of course, to estimate the halfway point of a square. And now I know that this is 12 feet and this is 12 feet. And the same goes for these. And now I can subdivide this square again. And you can see me kind of adjusting what, where I think the midpoint is. So now I'll subdivide these squares and I'll go this way. And in a sense, I'm creating my own graph paper um, but you'll see I still haven't created that that 40 foot dimension. I have the 24 foot, but I need the 40 foot. So now I'm going to correct these. I had 12 feet, but I've subdivided it again. So now each of these squares is six feet. So six, 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 six. And by the way, I would do this in a much more intuitive way, but I am going through it step by step at first. 
um, just to show you guys the process that went in um, and that I learned way back, but I, I would make I would do this in a much quicker and intuitive way, and you'll be able to as well. So remember, we have 24. We want to add 16 total to this because 24 plus 16 will be 40, okay? So I've got, an, I can count off an easy 18 here by three sixes, but I'm going to stop just short of that. And what I'll do is I'll double check what layer I'm on. I'll come over here, I'll tap the selection tool, and I'll tap the, tap the rectangular mode of the selection tool. And I'll come up here, I'll start down here, and I'll just pull up and grab... Uh, if I stopped there, I would have 18 feet. I'll just come back a little bit. I'll come back 2 feet, and I'm eyeballing that, of course. And now I will copy and paste that selection, okay? I'll copy and paste. And this will add that selection on its own layer, okay? You can't see it yet unless I turn off the underlying layer. But I've created a 16-foot long piece here. And now I'll move it and add it to that 24 foot square that I created just using my eyeballs and proportions. Okay. So now I'll merge this to eliminate confusion. I'll merge this and I will scrub out these numbers I assigned, but I'll leave the grid. Okay. I'll leave the grid marks. I don't want to lose those. And now I'll just write some more dimensions on these. Now I know each of these is six feet. And this one is going to be the exception. It's only four feet. But the overall dimension will be 40 feet, and this will be 24 feet, okay? So now I'll add a layer on top of that, and I'll do what I call the tracing paper layer. I'll change the color to white. And remember, I've just added a new layer. And now I can do my favorite thing, which is drag and drop the white down and drop it onto that layer. So I'm going to do that again. Keep, keep your eyes right here because it can be a little tricky, but I'll tap and hold and drag and drop. And you see how that white is obscuring? That's because it was over there waiting to be released. Now it's been released. And now I'll go to that layer. It's pure white now. And I'll tap the blending load blending mode icon and I'll reduce the opacity and you'll see there why I call it the tracing paper layer because now I can set that opacity wherever I want and I can begin to design over that okay now I like to have it very kind of opaque so I can I'm not thrown off by the grid lines but I want you to be able to see it too so now I'll add a layer I'll go back to my black design color. And at this point, it's basically the same thing we did last time where I'll, I'll add, maybe I'll make that a little bit more opaque this time. And I'll remember, we're going to have a dining room here somewhere. We're going to have a dining room table. I'm eyeballing what a three foot table might look like. I know that there'll be four chairs. This is a pretty long table. It's a, uh, more than six feet. It's probably about 10 feet long. I'll put a bowl in the middle of it and maybe I'll even make it a little longer and I'll throw in some chairs. And remember, all I'm doing is testing at a approximate scale. I'm trying to be responsible. I'm definitely being responsible. And I am now just, but I want to be fluid and quick too because I don't want to get overly precious with any of my ideas. So I'm drawing a hearth here and then the fireplace itself is back here and fireplaces. This is going to be a two-sided fireplace and I know they are about three feet deep, that kind of thing. And then there'll be a one-foot hearth on this side. And then I'll have some club chairs maybe out here and I'm not an interior designer, as I said, but I'll, I play one on TV. So I'll have, um, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll use my two finger taps 
and I'll, I'll make it look more like a magazine plan at first with a, I'll put this club chair a safe distance from the heat of that fireplace and I'll draw it. Now that's about, that's about half of one of these squares. Okay. So that's about three feet. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to pause to measure anything because I, I want to make quick and fluid progress, like we said. And I know that these will probably have an end table here. And then I'll have a large uh, sofa back here and a large, I want to make this just a very comfortable, relaxing place. And I think I'll get rid of that. That's a little too big, maybe. So I'll start to tighten this up and I'll just use the selection tool in rectangle mode to grab that sofa and I'll pull that over. So I'm, I'm eyeballing this, but I can always test it later, make sure it works. And let's see behind, let's make our sofa like this. And maybe that, maybe this is the one that has the side tables and these just kind of borrow the light. And I'll put a uh, Parsons table behind the sofa with a couple of beautiful table lamps and some magazines or a little piece of art there. And maybe I'll add some logs on the side. Log storage can be on the side. And maybe there's a, a moment here, a bookshelf or something with it. And then the same thing over here so that these two pieces create some tension and maybe there could be a sconce here and here and I create the same effect over here. Painting above uh, two sconces on either side of some sort of fantastic piece here. I can add maybe a, a game table over here uh, because we could have some kind of a beautiful window here maybe. Okay. And then I've got a lot of space back here, but that's because I love to play piano and I'm going to put in a large couple of bookcases and, and a very grand kind of opening. Maybe this goes back to the entryway of the house and I'll put in a, a, a large piano. I'll go maybe nine feet. Pianos are about five feet wide and I'll, give it that familiar shape because uh, for all of you piano players out there all the bass notes go on this side of the piano so they're long strings and all the tiny little high notes go on this side of a piano but i'll get rid of that and so and i need something maybe over here again this is getting a little blank so i'll put uh, maybe a, a larger area to play cards or something and it's starting to take shape and then maybe there'll be a, a beautiful rug or um, yeah, rug. I always confuse my terms rug and carpet and I'll put a beautiful rug under there and maybe there's a new, another beautiful rug where you enter. So there's my freehand design. Now the reason we call this retroactive scaling is because now I want to be responsible and make sure I haven't messed this up and I want to continue with design development at scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a scale ruler at this point. In fact, I think I'll import both a scale ruler and a grid template. And remember those, those grid templates are at the same scale. Uh, at the same size as the canvas I launched, which is 11 by 17. And it's also at 300 DPI. So watch what happens when I bring in the grid. So I'll go to my Imperial grid folder. I'll tap. Okay. So I'll tap this and watch carefully behind what happens. That grid comes in and fills up that entire space without changing that plan at all. Okay. So I'm going to move that grid now down to be the, the bottom layer. And you see, because remember we have this sheet of tracing paper in here. And if I turn that on and off, you'll see the grid still reads through. So it's a, still a good reference. 
And now I am going to go down to my grid. This is what I mean by the retroactive scaling part, okay? I'm going to tap and hold on this checkbox here so that all we see is the grid. And then I'm going to violate one of my own rules by marking up the grid. But the reason is because I want to mark this grid at, I want to mark off 40 feet in this grid, okay? So this grid is an eighth, eighth scale, one eighth division equals one inch, okay? So this is eight feet at eighth scale, but it's four feet at quarter scale, okay? So if I was working at one eighth scale, this would be eight feet, as you all know, but Remember, I'm not. I'm going to work at quarter scale. So this is now four feet, okay? So if I count off 10 of those squares, and I'll start back here so I'm safe. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's the end of that, okay? Now I'll just mark that I'll, I'll, because we're going to refer to this in a moment. And if each of these is four feet, I want to come and do six of them to make that 24 feet. Okay. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll draw another boundary line there. And you all know this, I'm sure if you hold down the tip of the pencil, you can make sure that line goes exactly where you want. Okay, so there is, to scale, a 24 by 40 foot rectangle, okay? Now, we talked about retroactive scaling, so here's the next step. I'm going to go back to the layer that I designed. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to weld it to, I'm going to actually uh, join it to the underlying freehand grid that we created. And I'll do that this way. I'll merge this. And now I'll move this whole thing over. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I'm in uniform mode. And now I will distort this grid or transform this grid. So it matches the what we know to be the 24 by 40 rectangle. Okay. And we were pretty close. I can finagle up here. Now I'm trying to make all of this line up up here and I'm a little bit off down here. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to the move and transform tool, but I'll switch to freeform mode and I'll grab this handle and you'll see in a moment that I can move this. I can stretch it just in that dimension when I use freeform. I can stretch it in this dimension or this dimension. And if I do, I can even do it this way from this corner and stretch it in both dimensions at the same time. But that's what I'll use to make my plan as closely conforming to the underlying 40 by 24 rectangle as possible. So now I'll tap out of the move and transform tool. I'll do the two finger pinch. And now we are designing more to scale. Okay. And in either this mode and in, in either the retroactive or the proactive mode, very often your next step will be to add another layer of trace. So I'll do that same thing. I'll select white. I'll double check that I'm in a new layer and I will pull over and release that color white. And this will become when I adjust, when I tap on this blending mode icon and I can adjust the opacity and I'll turn that into my layer of trace. Okay. So now there are two more things I'd like to discuss quickly. I know this is taking a long time and I really appreciate everyone's patience, but let's add another layer to this. And I want to show you 
how drawing assist can help you really polish this up now and um, get it ready for a presentation. So I'll go to my wrench menu, which is really my actions menu, but I like to call it the wrench. And I'll go to the canvas tab and I will engage the drawing guide, okay? Now the drawing guide by default comes up in 2D mode. So let's go back and let's look at that again. Actions, menu, drawing guide, on or off. And the indication that it's on will be that this grid appears. And now I'll go into the edit drawing guide just to show you where your choices are in here. You can see we are in 2D grid, but I could also go into perspective mode but I'll stay in 2D mode. Now that's the first step in drawing assist. You set drawing assist, you engage drawing assist. And once it is engaged, curiously, I can, I can make the grid go away by tapping this, by toggling it on or off. But it's still, drawing assist is still engaged. And I'll show you that right now because We've added a layer and we're going to draft this plan. And now when I tap on the layer to bring up the layer pop-up, I see a choice for drawing assist. So I can tap that. And what I've just done is I've engaged drawing assist in 2D mode. And I like to call that drafting mode. And now I will find a new color. Let's do it in black. I'll choose my brush. I like my technical pen. I'll test it over here just to see how thick the lines are. Now remember I can keep the line more elegant and thin by just not pressing as hard. If I press harder, it'll get bigger. But I can work with this, okay? So now I'll zoom in and I think I'll reduce the opacity of this tracing layer so you can follow this a bit better. Once again, I'll double check that I'm in my new layer and I will come in and draft this plan. So I'll find the line that I need where it starts and I'll come down and add this wall. I'll add that wall thickness. I'll find a reasonable spot for this wall amongst all these scribbles that I've done. And then I'll make this a nice six inch wall and the same thing around you just kind of track it around and i'll add the thickness of the wall outside of the sketch and add the thickness of the wall here i'll come in and one by one i'll pick up the things that have determined the size of the room so here for instance can be my eight foot wide opening that's four feet and eight feet here can be my shelves. I'll give six inches for light switches and such, and I'll bring my shelves across. I won't do the furniture yet, but I'll put in the architecture. So let's add this fireplace and the wood stacking area, and I'll make the fireplace. I'll start by making that eight feet wide also, and then I'll pick up the other end of the fireplace here, and I see that I've got the hearth extended there. So I'll add the lines for the hearth. And uh, again, I'm not going to do this furniture yet because we have a special trick for the furniture, okay? But I will put in the carpet. I'll just throw that in. And I'm, I'm not really measuring anything. I'm just kind of playing around, okay? So I'll go back to the layer of trace and I'll make it a little more opaque because I want this furniture to almost go away. I hope you can faintly see it now. Um, and at this point, you can imagine that this is the beginning of your, if you're into that, if you don't want to keep your designs freehand, this can be the beginning of your drafted plan. Okay. But there is one more fun touch to all this. I'll add a layer. 
and I'll go into my brush library. And another one of my secret weapons is that I've created what I call the F, F and E, one eighth and one quarter scale library of F, F and E or placeholder furniture, okay? And each of these is labeled. Here's a, a quick uh, one eighth set, but the rest of these are, which, which incorporates every kind of room, but because the quarter inch brushes are bigger, the quarter inch stamps are bigger, I had to, I had to, uh, and I'll tap here and show you, I had to classify them by room. So let's go to the room where it says seating only, or maybe it's group seating. Now let's go to seating only, and I'll engage that. I'll tap out of the brush library. I'll make sure that I'm in a new layer, and now watch. I'm going to tap firmly in the center of this space, okay? And when I do that, up comes furniture, and it's already at quarter inch scale because again of all that we did to make sure that the 300 dpi extends across all of our drawings okay and now i can select it's a little confusing maybe what i'll do is i'll move this layer of trace up above even the sketch plan that we did and now those have been stamped in and I will go to the selection tool in rectangle mode and I'll find some placeholder furniture. So I'll start with this sofa here and I'll use the copy and paste mode here and that as you recall lifts it off and places it on its own layer and now I can turn off the underlying template layer just tap this checkbox, that goes away. Now this is already selected. I can tap the move tool and I can rotate it. I can either rotate it this way or I can come back here and rotate it this way, okay? And I'll, it's already ready to be moved around so I'll place that here, okay? Now, I'm curious, I don't, want, I don't want to mislead anybody, so I'll go back and I'm going to add a scale ruler, okay? And let's just make sure that this all works. I want you to see how kind of cool this is. So I'll go to the Add, the Actions menu. I'll go to the Add tab. I'll go to Insert a File. I'll go back to the home page of iCloud Drive, and that's the real back and forth communication between Procreate and your own file system is iCloud Drive. And I will look for the scale rulers, and I'll bring in the half scale ruler that has all the imperial and metric and engineering scales. I'll tap on the quarter inch scale and I'll bring that in and notice that the quarter inch part is down here so I want to rotate that like this and now I'll bring this up and we'll measure that sofa and you can see sure enough uh, my free hand was a little off it was a little sketchy but that sofa is about seven feet long by three feet wide, okay? So I'll turn off the scale. We know everything's working. And I'll go back and I'll find the club chairs that go on either side of that sofa. So I'll go back into my, and we're almost done here. I'll go back into my main part of my selection, main part of my brush stamp, and I'll pick these huge club chairs here. I'll come down to copy and paste and tap that. That club chair will now be on its own layer as we saw before. I'll turn off the layer that has all of the stamps within it and that club chair is still selected 
and now I'll move it up and put it there and voila you've got the beginning of all of your furniture okay so that is in a nutshell how I retroactively draw to scale and again we went back this time I'll look at um, this could be fun let's look at the actions menu I'll go to the video I'll go to time-lapse replay and we can reconstruct what we did remember we estimated a square we then used it here's the part we then used it to lay out the room we used our extreme freehand skills so we would be as fluid and as loose as possible to lay in some ideas about furniture and we then got to a point where it seemed to be working but we had to scale it up so we determined how big we needed to make it we reactivated the plan and then we scaled it using the move and transform tools so that we could then continue to work on it we then drafted the perimeter and obviously we could have gone much further than that but i wanted to just show you all the basic ideas and then we added we used our brush template our brush stamp to add furniture and select them one at a time and that is how we retroactively designed to scale so that's it for my section of this course it's been a pleasure working with all of you I'll leave links in the description below as to how to get the templates and the scale rulers and the brush sets that I've used and the ones you've seen demonstrated in this video. And again, I want to invite all my viewers to go see Anna's channel. That link is also in the description below. Her work is absolutely beautiful, and I look forward to collaborating more in the future.